Hi, this is Tommy from um, Pitch Up Look Sharp, and I'm just going to be talking through and giving a slight review of having um, a wood burning stove in my Robens tent. <laughs> Original Albaca stoves. And here it is. It sits in your tent. And obviously the flue goes all the way up for a hole. And it has this meta metal meshing meshing that keeps the material away. It keeps the hot pipe away from the material of the tent. And if I just walk outside. It obviously comes out the tent all the way up the flue and it has a spark arrest which is that thing right at the top which helps dissipate the sparks if you do have any sparks come up you can see on this ribbons tent it's designed for this and it has this sort of cover which that's that where that metal flue is and this square unrolls and you can roll it back down if you're not using the stove. I've got a couple of guy ropes on the stove, blue, just in case. I mean, there's only so much you can do to stop it rattling around, but that helps. I've got three guy ropes. It doesn't come with them when you buy the stove, which is a little bit annoying. And I had to do a slight modification where I bought these chains which hang off the spark arrest at the top. And these are like cool, I just got them on eBay, they're just like market chains for market stalls. But they have a hook at the top and they come down and then the hooks of this sleeve hang off, hang off it. The whole of this flue all packs down and fits inside the actual wood burning stove itself. So it doesn't take up much space. Um, it's just the matter of um, the stove itself. All of the actual specifications, I could put a link to the website where you can buy it. Um, I've got no affiliation with it. It's a cheaper brand than the Robin's own stove. Here we are back inside the tent. So, a couple of things to note when operating stove in a tent is that safety first so we have a carbon monoxide tester in the tent whenever we're running the fire you can see that's on zero I do in my log uh, my bag for logs I do have a fire extinguisher and a and a um, fire mat the fire then sits on this fire resistant carpet which keeps it off the actual tent floor. Now on this Robins tent um, the floor you can actually zip out which I've not I've not ever done so that the stove isn't sitting on this on directly on the on the material but it's with this fire resistant carpet it hasn't caused any damage to the uh, to the tent to the ground sheet. Um, and here it is inside. You obviously load up the stove at the front. It has a sort of capacity. It has a little tray at the bottom for ash. And then here's inside. Here's the door, you've got a little bit of glass so you can see what's going on. Locks up, seals up, and you can control the fire with this vent at the front. You also have this um, this thing at the top you could take off and what that allows is you can cook directly on the flames you can put your pot and I've got a wok that fits on that lovely and seals that up so the flames inside just tickle the bottom of the the wok which is quite nice um, if, you, if you are cooking stuff a good tip is that you feed the fire from this hole and not from the front because from experience, what happens if you feed it through the front when you're cooking, you're throwing the logs right into the back 
and the flames are just going up the flue. Whereas what you want when you're cooking, you want the flames to come up straight underneath the pot. So really you want to lift up your pot, put the next log or piece of wood in here, then you can carry on cooking. That's just a little tip. It's great with these little, um, and that fits back on and twists and locks. It's great with these little side, um, little side shelving. Um, yeah, so you can adjust these. Uh, you can dry your, we've dried like wet socks on there. Obviously if we're cooking, we dried stuff while we got the fire on. It gets very toasty in here. That's just one thing to bear in mind when you've got this thing on. I, I can't remember how many kilowatt this fire is, but it gets extremely toasty. Uh, another little thing to bear in mind with these sort of fires is the first time I lit it up in my garden to test it, it's very easy to, to have the fire draw way too much. And what can happen, this flue can get red hot, which is not, it's not the situation you want. So you've got to be very careful in how much oxygen you supply to the fire. Don't overdo it because you can get the flames to go all the way up. And I had them coming up all the way up over in the top of the flue which is crazy um, and you're going to get a lot of sparks if you do that and you're going to get a lot of uh, stuff going in the air which is not what you want uh, instead you want to keep the fire just burning at a nice temperature you know and not drawing too much of the flue I think that's pretty much everything. The only there's a couple of other things to bear in mind. That rust is a bit of a problem with this with this stove. Um, every time I come back from a trip, I treat it. Um, with just a stove, like a, it's like a black um, stove sort of polish. Um, but you can see it around the flue here that rust is a bit of an issue with it. Um, it's not too bad around the, the box in, inside, it's, it's quite bad. Um, but I don't mind too much there. Just aesthetically, it looks a bit doesn't look very good to have that rust on the top here the reason being that there's rust that you will have a slight in heavy rain you will have water come down the chimney because there's no way that that can perform a perfect seal I mean you can see daylight for it so you will have I've had water run down the flue it's fine if you've got the fire on it just absolutely burns it off no problem with that just you just hear drops of steam drops of water turns steam but when you haven't, it will just flow, and that's probably why this area here does suffer a bit from um, rust. But it's nothing too alarming. Yeah, so I think that's the main points. I could probably, um, I'll probably wrap it up here. But like I said, this it makes one of the biggest things about getting a stove. Is it really like if you're out in a tent and it's cold, this thing just brings the space to life. Like we've we've been camping before and it's been pretty chilly and literally we've had we've had like four four people, five of us. I mean I went on a family camping trip, we had kids in here because they're all cold and wet and we literally dried out, got them all dried, like all their clothes, their wet socks, and it's a really nice addition to have and it it kind of it's one of the big reasons I got this tent was because I just love that cozy sort of feel and like it's nice you just like you unzip you have it all toasty in here and you unzip the tent tent and you walk out and it's like a really cold evening and it's kind of just it makes it so much more homey anyway this has um, been Tommy from Pitch Up Look Sharp and thanks for watching I